When I was a kid, I had a part-time job one summer on a farm in Illinois detasseling corn. What you do is, you stand in a basket that's attached to a tractor that drives very slowly up and down these endless rows of corn, and you lean out with your bare hands and you grab the tassels that grow out of the top of each stalk. Every single stalk. It's got to be done because if you don't detassel corn, it messes up the whole pollinization process. But full disclosure, it's not the best corn related job I've ever had. That would be this job, narrating this episode of How America Works, because tonight I get to introduce you to a few of the men and women who are directly responsible for processing over 100,000 tons of corn in this country every single day. 100,000 tons of corn every single day. It's mind boggling. When you think about the impact of corn on our daily lives, never mind its deliciousness right off the cob, I'm talking about its impact on medicines and textiles and energy, everything. Sit back and relax as I try and forget that endless summer in Southern Illinois detasseling corn and introduce you instead to a few hardworking men and women who know exactly how America works. You can't spell cornerstone without corn. And nowhere is that more true than in these United States. Corn is our nation's largest crop, and we grow more of it by far than any other country. Why is that? Well, we have the space for it. We have pretty favorable soil and climate conditions, and as we've come to learn, it can be turned into a wide array of useful things, from food to fuel, even plastics. That's why every year, farmers plant and harvest an area roughly the size of Montana, exclusively with corn. But that's just the beginning. From there, it's up to 40 corn mills scattered across the country to turn those raw kernels into consumable product. Mills like Lifeline Foods in St. Joseph, Missouri. Here, a team of nearly 200 employees labor day in and day out to create a wide variety of meals, grits, and flours used in everything from tortilla chips to beer. And believe it or not, their busiest time of year is in the dead of winter. Specifically, in the days leading up to America's peak time for corn consumption, Super Bowl Sunday, the day when more food is eaten nationwide than any other of the year. And since the vast majority of it contains corn, guys like mill manager Kyle Ham have a whole lot to do before quitting time comes. This week we got about seven million pounds of corn goods that we got to ship out, so it's a pretty stressful time. For Kyle's part, that means processing one million pounds of product before day's end. An all-time record amount for he and his colleagues. And it starts with ensuring that their inbound product is free from any unwanted debris. From here, you can see it flowing over the belt where we weigh the amount going to the mill, and it just flows over the belt to our cleaning system. Just an example of what we're trying to clean off here. So we're trying to take out any cobs and stalks that is still left on the corn, and so we don't want any of that in there before it goes to our timber system. That system is a complicated network of pipes, belts, and machinery designed to take these whole kernels and reduce them to grits. And here's roughly how that happens. First, the corn is fed into what's called a degermer, which cracks it to expose the more nutritious insides. Then it's sent through roller mills, which further grind the corn down to a variety of granules. Finally, it's sifted to sort those granules into uniform groups. It's kind of a lot to keep track of, so Kyle relies on the mill's control room to keep an eye on the big picture. First thing when I come in, I come check out the computer screens. This graph is our production of our different products. So if we see any big changes, it's something we need to go check out. And already, Kyle's trained eye picks up on something strange in the de-germing department. It looks like our corn quality has dropped off, which we don't want. This being a 10-story building, issues like these keep Kyle constantly moving from floor to floor. But no time for climbing stairs or waiting on elevators. 
Here, they have a means of transit all their own, a nifty little contraption known as an endless man lift. And once on the right level, Kyle wastes no time locating the degermer in question, which appears to be cracking the corn a little harder than it should. What we're looking for here is a good kernel to be right to germ. The bran is taken off, but the germ has popped out, and we want it to look more like that. Well, there's a few of the larger ones, but for the most part, it's very small, and there's a lot of flour in there. So that tells me that this is way too tight, and we need to back it off so that we don't kill our yield. Keeping a close eye on the corn is vital to Lifeline's everyday operations, especially today. But so too is looking after the many specialized machines that make production at its two main milling operations possible. For that, there's fabricator extraordinaire, Tom Hayden. They depend on the fabrication crew, keep the corn flowing, and to try to move the product as fast and as much as we can. So we'll always have chips for the Super Bowl, as long as we can keep the mill running. <laughs> And since, for the moment, both mills seem to be running just fine, Tom's kicking off a new build that should help one of them run even more efficiently by adding what's known as a transition, which will double the flow of corn through one of its systems. First, though, Tom has to get a rough idea of what he'll need for the job. So we'll have one come down there and up under here, this trough right here. We've got to tie into this one and bring them down into one. So to do that, we're going to need to get some dimensions. We'll measure everything up, and it's just all on a piece of paper. And I guess that's the way I'm wired. But I can visualize this in my head, what it's going to look from the beginning to the end. And it always works. I don't know why, but it just does. That may be greatly thanks to Tom's 40 years of experience, but a pretty robust workshop, complete with a manned plasma cutter, certainly doesn't hurt. So we'll need a transition, probably roughly eight inches tall. So I don't know, maybe 10 gauge, 12 gauge, whatever you got handy. Uh, I need four of them. Right. So if you could do that for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right. All right, bye. Thank you. Cutters like this one are a serious time saver for guys like Tom. Cutting in minutes what would take hours to do by hand. And with those components complete... Thank you, Eli. Tom can now start piecing the new transition together. Tom, you got a copy? Yeah, go for Tom. But a call over the radio usually means his skills are needed elsewhere. I need your help down here by the magnet. And apparently, this call is no exception. 10-4, I'll get right on that. For Tom and his colleagues, it goes without saying that a down magnet means a down mill, something Lifeline can scarcely afford today. We have to be able to catch any metal products that may flow through the system. So this magnet has to be fixed as soon as possible so that we can go ahead and keep running. Magnets aren't the only things that keep the mills at Lifeline cranking. There's also the corn itself. And to hit today's ambitious quota of a million pounds, they'll need to process more than they currently have in stock. To make up the difference, one local farmer has answered an urgent call for 30 more tons of the stuff. Do it Lifeline Foods in just three short hours. But if anybody can make that happen, it's John Schenkel. Usually we don't haul on Saturdays, but we got to get this load down there as fast as we can. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. Unfortunately for John and his son, John Jr., this is the quiet time of year when they typically conduct maintenance on their machinery, some of which is already known to need repairs. So they'll need to fire it all up and deal with any issues as they arise, starting with their 18-wheeler. That one looks good. We got a grease on our fifth wheel. Did that yesterday. We should be ready to fire up and hook up the trailer and get the load. Got her. 
Next up, the grain vacuum, which will transfer the corn from one of John's storage silos into the trailer. Unfortunately for John, it's also one of the machines on his maintenance list. He suspects on account of a faulty drive chain. See what you think about that chain. And sure enough, John was right. All right, we're gonna have to get that fixed. Rip that one off there. I'll see what I got. 